I played a little bit more until I came now to this result here. And I want to show you really fast what I've done here. I changed some of um, these leaks here and grunge leaks so that I found something more directional. So I have here the grunge leaks, for example, in this generator here. And then I found that I want to have it a little bit more directional blurred. And so you see, I've added here directional blur. So you get something like that if you go here to the generators and add a filter. And inside of the filters, you have here different kind of filters. And here are blurs and also a directional blur. So I liked the idea here that the wetness is a little bit yeah, stretched out because yeah, maybe you want to have it vertically in your glass. And then I played a little bit more here with the colors, so the base color, the height, and I removed the roughness completely because, or nearly completely, so that it like, looks really wet. And if you now move the light around, you see it looks now like this here. Let's do one last thing before we export. I want to have here a text in um, the wood. So we can now do it here underneath the whole stack, which makes sense for me. So I hold down now my left mouse button and drag here over all these eyes to come here now back to the first layer. And if you are rotating and holding down the shift key, you see it snaps so that you look here really perfectly on the top. It's still perspective. If you want to have an auto look, you can switch it here to auto. So this would be perfectly from the top. Okay. So add a fill again, this time we name it text. And again, black mask. And to add text inside of Substance Painter, there are different approaches. If you take a look here into your project and you write font, not front, font, you will see that there are some texts predefined here. And the funny thing is, some texts are yeah, changeable. For example, if you take here substance and you go over them, you see that everything is substance, but the font type is different. So if you take font Euro, for example, and add this here, for example, as a stencil, we didn't talk about stencil, but we do it in a moment. You now see that inside of this stencil where this font is placed, you can change here now your text if you like. So can write something in or so. So if you find here a font which you like, you can use it. Uh, that's one way of doing that. I deactivate the stencil here. Or you can import something which you've generated outside. And I went here to Affinity Photo and made here a square image. I typed here brush me and I made it a little bit soft because if you stamp into wood, it never has really sharp edges. So I made it a little bit soft and I made here a PNG out of that. And if you now go here to your uh, Substance Painter, you can go here to your project again. And we go here to Import, Add Resource. And inside of our Houdini project, I placed here a folder, the name Texture Extern. And here is the brush me text. I import that. I have to tell again what it is. So is it an alpha or a texture? How do you want to use it? I want to use it, for example, as a texture. And I want to have it inside of this project. I do that. And now if we go here into our textures, you see here brush me. Now let's go back to our mask and we talk really briefly about a stencil. A stencil is, like I've said, something which is in front of the surface and you paint through it. And where it's white, it paints through and black blocks. So if you now take this stencil and bring it here, you see now the stencil in your viewport. And what you now can do is you can paint through that. Or what you also can do, other idea is, I get rid of the stencil here, you go here to the projection tool, and then you only see a stencil, and you can add it here. So you now have a projection tool with this stencil here. And to move the stencil and do something with that, you hold down the S key. Then you see everything else goes black, 
And with the left mouse button, you can rotate it. If you hold down Shift, you snap here to 90 degree angles. If you hold down S and the middle mouse button, you can place it. And S and the right mouse button, you can scale it. And so you search now for something which you like. I look perfectly here on my surface. And then you can look here through the other properties of your projection. So we have here our brush. You can make it sharp if you like. But I paint over that completely. So yeah, I don't need that. Also, we can change here alpha and all these things. But yeah, let me paint here really fast. Okay, here it is. And that's it. We go out here and this here is now our mask. And if we go now here and first go here to a red color, you see, yeah, that's now red color again. Great. Don't forget to go back here to perspective. So that's it. And if you now want that this here is now pressed into the surface here, what you can do now is you go here to this layer, the fill layer. The first thing we go is height and I move it down. Now you see you bring it down into the wood. Then we can think about, has it a color? Yeah, it has a color because they printed a color into that. So we can now change the color here. I desaturate it a little bit, make it darker. Yeah, find something which you like. Or try it again. Yeah, now you have a color which fit a little bit better. And then you also can say, okay, is it rough or not? You know this, you can now change this again. And now we have all these other things on top. And one little side note, if you now have, for example, a, a generator over that here, uh, which has to use, for example, edge damage here, this information here, you will see that um, this generator will not see the text here. You can do that. It's a little bit more advanced topic with an anchor point. But yeah, this is something we don't do here. So now everything is finished and we have our text here. And now we can export that. To do that, we go here to File, Export Textures. And here we have our configuration, which we had before, Metal Roughness. You can change it now, but we don't want to. Here is the folder where you want to export it to. And I click here. And I switch now into our Houdini project, Toothbrush. And we go here into the Texture folder. And inside of the Texture folder, I make a new folder here. Toothbrush so that we know that these are the toothbrush textures. Then we can see here which maps will be exported here. And you see it's base color, roughness, metallic, and so on. And if you have different render configurations, you can change here the config. If you open that up, you see there's a really big bunch of different export settings which you can use. But we will use Mantra and Renaman maybe in a bonus. And so, um, yeah, Metal Rough is absolutely okay if you want to work with that. But if you have a other render engine, a V-Ray, for example, or so you can select this here and you get the right maps with the right names here. Then we decide which file format we want to use. I want to use EXRs. So switch it here to EXR. It's 32 bits, so nothing else here. And like I've explained in the first lesson about Substance Painter, you can now change here the map size and uh, Substance Painter will recalculate everything for you procedurally. So if you like, you can go now to 4K and say, yeah, then we have enough resolution. And now I click here export and now it starts calculating. You see here and it takes a while because first he has to bring it to 4K and then you see that the maps are now exported. And if you now click to open folder, you will see now here are your maps. And yeah, that's it for the Substance Painter part of this tutorial series. 
I hope you learned also something here in Substance Painter and we see each other in the next lesson where we want to use now inside of Houdini these textures to texture light and make a final render. Have fun with that. Helga Maus from Pixel Train.